Hey guys, what's going on? Welcome back to the channel, AZ Trimester. So, after I got done recording and sharing with all of you the uh, Sportster versus Scout uh, video that I just very recently put out, I had gotten to thinking, you know, maybe that uh, I'd overlooked some details. Um, so, there's a couple things I want to mention, go over that I think are very important for a prospective buyer of either one of these bikes uh, or, has, or anyone that's considered them. The, um, the other thing is that I want to share a little bit more about my experiences um, with my Victory Octane and uh, how that relates to the Scout. So the first thing that um, I would say, kind of going back to the other video real quick, the Scout has its positives, its attributes. Again, the, the sixth gear um, that's not offered on the Sportster but is on the Scout is really nice. Um, and again, having a more refined feeling uh, motorcycle as far as engine, power delivery, and handling um, is probably going to be something that some folks out there are looking for comparatively. Um, I mentioned that the suspension on the Scout um, does better on, on the highway uh, versus in town. If you've ever looked at the profile of the Scout and the Sportster, or even the Scout and the profile of the Victory Octane, which I had, you'll notice that the rear shocks on the Scout um, lay more in line with the motorcycle as opposed to more up and down like your typical motorcycle. Speaking of which, like this. So, I mean, most bikes that have dual shock set up, you're not going to find a completely vertical rear shock. But the Scout tends to lay a little bit more like this. And what I found that to do is create a stiffer, um, I mean, even if the shocks are the same across the board, the angle is going to play a factor in how those shocks react. So in town, when you have rougher road conditions, you're going to feel it. And I can say that is true from experience. Um, my Octane didn't have the same angle as, uh, as rear shocks as the Scout and the Octane handled the rougher roads better, much like a Sportster does. Get on the open road where there's smoother roads and the you know speeds are faster, the Scout levels out. It's great. Um, I know that the new Sportsters you can get with a keyless ignition, which is really nice. I have that on my soft tail. It's a really cool feature. I know that the Scouts, at least in my experience, I don't know if they still do, but it's a pretty neat thing. You just touch the starter button and hands off, it would just crank until it starts, um, which, I mean, that's a nice feature too. Um, nifty little things. Um, very important. When I f sat on my first Harley, which was a 2010 48, I, I fell in love. It was in the showroom. I'm five foot five. It was the first motorcycle I'd ever flat footed and felt comfortable. And so I was like, this is the bike for me. Get it out of the store, start riding, getting on the freeway, different story. Those forward controls are tough for a short guy, um, especially with how much a Harley kind of shakes and rattles and vibrates and kind of resonate. If you're reaching your, your, feet, kind of, your feet kind of resonate off the, the pegs. Fast forward to getting my 2014 Sportster uh, 72, that came with forward controls. One of the first things I did was I went on eBay, I found mid brackets and the linkage, and I put them on my 72 right away. And I was so very happy that I did that. Uh, it was a great decision. What I'm getting at is the Scout, whether it's the Bobber, the 60, or just your Scout 1200, they all have forward controls. I don't care if one's an inch closer, it's still a forward control. And do what you want, put boards on it, whatever the case is, but it's still forward controls. I believe 
that your options for moving the foot rests back are very limited and very expensive. And that is likely because of the route that the exhaust or essentially just the stock exhaust head pipes are. So that's something to be very mindful of. And I think that it's important. Another thing, the cast frame on the Scout lends room for a radiator up front. So it's liquid cooled. That's great. What it also does is it elongates the seat to, we'll say, neck distance. So while the Sportster, which I believe has a shorter wheelbase, might feel a little bit tighter in the way that, you know, reach goes, the Scout would tend to feel a little bit longer uh, in that way. So when you're putting a set of handlebars on there, if you're shorter, you may need to keep them pulled back towards you instead of doing that cool grungy look where they're straight up. But again, that's a short guy thing. Um, and I think the last thing I'm going to touch on is something that is, it limits what you can do to a scout, but it's also an aesthetic thing. Um, if you look here, and I'm using my slim as an example, You've got risers that bolt right through. And so any of you that are subscribed to my channel, the bars that I had on this before I put these ones on replaced the risers. They bolted straight into the triple. Uh, and then I swapped them out for this. I put the stock clamps back on and now I have a clamp style bar. This is, I personally would say valuable information because if you value aesthetics as much as I do and you val and I personally value aesthetics as much as I value versatility and usage, I, I, I equate them about the same for me in a motorcycle, then having that, uh, the triple top triple as it is with the scout where the risers are part of it, it's not something you can remove. Um, it limits what you can do with the bars. You can really only have a clamp style bar. Um, there's probably some folks out there that are thinking, hey, there's these riser inserts that you can get. Yes, that's true. Um, but I think we should be mindful of once, once you start doing that, you start getting away from what looks natural in a motorcycle's design or lines. You start adding those um, odd shaped risers and I've seen them. I mean, they, they serve a purpose. Sure. Um, but, uh, again, I think we're getting away from then if you have the aesthetics, uh, that you value, that may be something that, uh, you want to keep in mind. So those are the things that were rallying around in my head after the last video that I felt were very important to share with you guys. Again, um, this particular segment of this two-parter video, we will say, um, probably sounded a little more uh, Harley favor favoring. Um, I have had three Harleys. Um, I had one Polaris, which was the Victory Octane. When I was shopping for my current bike, I strongly considered a Scout because of the sixth gear. And I had only known V-Twins up to 1200 cc's. Well, once I rode the, the Milwaukee 8 Slim, I was sold. But I loved my Octane, it was great. Um, the reason I traded it in, and this is 100% truth, 100%, was the, I would say probably two big things. One, victory was closed. They didn't exist anymore. So as far as history goes, that kind of sucks. Harley's been around for over a hundred years, a fairly uninterrupted history, and that meant something to me. The other thing was character. The Victory being as refined as it was, didn't have a lot of character. You can do things like add a noisy exhaust and, and you know slam the rear, make it grungy. Those things are great, but I really feel a connection to a Harley um, and maybe it's the nostalgia of look of it, which probably is why I have a 
a slim, which is a reach to the late forties style motorcycle. I mean, maybe it's how much noise and, and movement that the, uh, Harley V twin makes, but those are the two and the reasons why I moved away from my Polaris. Um, so there it is guys. Um, hundred percent, everything on the table. Now, you know what I've experienced, what I value in a motorcycle, what led me away from the bike I had to kind of follow the sequence of bikes I've had since. So I hope it's all been valuable, helpful. Um, and if you stuck it out this long and listened to my uh, opinions, then, um, I really appreciate it. And I assume there's probably some sort of liking the video you'd be willing to do. So hit that button if you can. Subscribe to the channel. And as always, stay safe out there.